What's up guys? Welcome back to SPP TV. Today we are uh, doing things. Plan today is to get the 5.3 from the shit horse back together. We're getting the oil pan ready. Uh, it has to be welded. Hoping it's gonna go good. If it doesn't, we always have the backup of a uh, another oil pan that we can use. Heating this one in the barbecue, old barbecue. As you can see, here's like oil coming out of the porous areas. There was some coming out of there, but it's kind of stopped now. So hopefully uh, this pan isn't as bad as the one that I had on my truck. But we're gonna hopefully get her welded up and get it back on the engine and get the engine in the car. Wow, that's hotter than I thought it was. Ooh. You just burn yourself? I'm not burn myself, I have gloves on, but the glove got really hot. Yeah, I can feel it it's standing about a couple feet away, expect. so it's, it's pretty I mean, hot. I know it's hot, but I didn't. <laughs> it's an oil pan, not a radiator. It smells exactly what you wouldn't want your car to smell like after a burnout competition right now. Just like engine mayhem. Some of you might have seen in the previous video where Rob did this, welding the oil pan together. Round two, we're hoping it goes a bit smoother. We've already done the barbecue method. It was wow. an afterthought last time. Yeah, the difference is last time I didn't, I didn't do this at first. I didn't preheat it. So then it welded shitty and then, then when I did heat it in the barbecue, it seemed to be better. So we're hoping that this is gonna be better. And that's a non-chlorinated brake clean. You're not drink it. You're not supposed to use the chlorinated kind because you'll die and stuff. But it's like here where it's thick, it, that's where it doesn't seem to want to weld good. Come heat, heat, heat! Hurry, hurry! Oh, shit. Well, why would you think it would turn it off? Well, I don't care about the cocaine. Cocaine <laughs> accessories. Well, that looks pretty good. That looks mint. It started flowing good all of a sudden. I was like, holy crap! I better get keep moving. But like I said, the nice thing here is because there's this thin edge, you know, you're kind of just melting the two together. Here you have to kind of build it up because there's actually a lip here, right? But I heard that dreaded cracking sound. I did hear it. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily cracking. It could just be mo moving around, you know? And you can still see all that black shit in the well. That's all the con that's still contamination from oil and oh, I can see a crack there now. Where? Right along the well, see? Yeah. Same fucking thing it did before. Like, I don't know if it's because, you know, like I ran a pretty long bead, like if I just have to keep going around with small taps See like that. that. Uh, section but when it's welding, well, it was welding really nice, so I figured, well, I'll keep going, but I'll try doing this section here and see what happens. I think if I grab it, like... So we put it on the barbecue again, got her super hot. I've just finished welding her up. This one actually went pretty good. You were just saying, it uh, only cracked once or twice. Clayton was definitely helping out with the heating and yeah, there you have it. So from that line to that line, you're saying that's an inch and a quarter? Yeah. Okay, good. plan is to take this, 
I want to cut the nub off, the rest of this nub, and then I'm going to take the cutoff wheel, or cutoff wheel, um, carbide bit, and I'm going to grind this out a bit, and then hopefully make it so it slips right over top. I want to try to get it to slip on like it does from the factory. Then, it, then we're overlap welding it, and it'll weld a lot better. Is my idea. Is there air in the line? The air in the line, yeah. Water in the line. I hope there's air in the line, or else what are we gonna do? Got air in his water line. two halves are slid together they're not just like butt welded together they're like they're basically from the factory style and actually putting it in because this tube is not totally round kind of when I banged it in there it conformed itself perfectly to the shape of the tube like if, well here if I take it off I look at the hole now it's not round neither is this so it conformed itself like really nice that part of the shit <laughs> that part of the tube wasn't perfectly round because of that bracket well, and that's just the way it's bent, yeah. yeah. But that should work good. That's We're talking about soldering it, but I'm just going to weld it. I think that'll be better. Like when I did mine, you know, I cut it and then I butt welded it. I butted it together and welded it. And it was kind of like, you know, I had pinholes to deal with and I had to keep pressure testing it. This should be way better because it's like part of it now. Like I said, I think you could just solder it because it is soldered. Probably must be soldered from the factory, but... I might as well take weld it together. Oh. Then we'll have to cut this bracket down and it'll have to get welded back on. But we'll do that. We'll put it on the engine and mock it up and I'll weld it on. There we go, welded. Yeah, that was way nicer than doing it the way I did it. So I think there's a pinhole right there. We filled the oil pan with water and uh, there's just a couple little pinhole leaks. I kind of marked them with marker, but we're going to go around the whole thing with some uh, JB Weld stuff. Shmoo in those little holes. That stuff. Steel. And metal. I wouldn't worry about this one because this one doesn't really leak. A couple little spots. Mine was leaking more than this one was. Like ice in a cake? Yeah, we're going to take the shit horse off jumps and stuff. Yeah. Though, so yeah. I would say, yeah. I'll cut a bit and then I'll check it. Fitting the uh, pickup tube now. That's shining. Good job cleaning that thing. Master build. Put leave that light in there. Now put it back on. Okay. Now you should be able to look through the oil fill and then see where the pickup tube is, and it's perfect. Exactly where it should be. A quarter inch or so off the bottom. Some good measuring. We gotta blow this pickup out, eh? Before we're done with it. Let's pull his shavings. Wait, you can see him. Well, we know that. We're not done yet, though. Let's get done first. I'm not going to clean it out and then weld on grind on it more. Sparks. Cue the grinding montage. Mike's grinding montage. It's Mike's grinding montage! Oh, blind, we can see. See, I'm saying, oh, I, that's what we should do. Just sing the songs. Yeah. And then will we get copyrighted for them? Unless we sing them dead on, we should be okay. So it shouldn't be a problem. Ready to weld. Oh, Got Mike. the pan on. You were Mike. Pick it in. Good to go. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Getting okay. windy. That Nova ever seen rain? I don't care if it gets rained on. I don't really want it to get hailed on, and I don't want it to get uh, dirty. I don't want to drive it in the rain because I don't want it to get dirty. It's 
not that I, I can't drive it in the rain, especially with my new tires. Look at all these extra sipes and stuff on here. I'll be able to drive in the winter with all this shit. Extra grooves. Are they going on the car or you just hold them there for now? Eventually. There's a, I still have tires on there. Uh oh, guys. The rain's too close to the Nova. So this thing is ready to ship. We gotta take it to uh, the shit horse now and put it in there. And that's about it. Clayton put the transmission in already. Supposedly. Or so, so he says. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess somebody we haven't seen took a person. it out last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do still have to figure out the new throttle body stuff. If the computer in the car can do drive by cable. Oh yeah, there's a gas pedal in all that. And yeah, we got a gas pedal out of a Mustang and okay. throttle so. cable, all that stuff. So you don't, do you have one of those filters now? Be a couple days before it's running. Now, the moment Clayton's been waiting for, a ride in the Nova. We're going to North Star to eat. I usually don't like stab it from a, like not a dead stop even. Like I usually, you know, I roll into it. And I actually like floored it pretty fast, like just when I started moving and it built boost like fucking that. On driving, whatever. Look at that thing, guys. Whoever's gonna fall off will stop. You know, things are just falling off. Best burgers in town. All right, so we came back uh, after eating, and uh, it ended up getting a little later in the evening or in the day. So uh, we're not gonna take the shit horse engine today. It's ready to go, but uh, we're not gonna do that today. We bought my box in the garage. As you can see, here it is. Uh, I want to get it ready to put on. So when I, I had lifted it up the other day and I wanted to tap all the bolt holes for where it bolts on, I noticed uh, this one here is all cracked and rusty. Looks like I fixed this one before I welded a piece on. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one as welded on because otherwise this moves around and stuff like that. And then maybe, maybe while I have the box off, I'll get some paint. I'll clean this up and I'll paint the underneath. Why not? Just to make it all nice and black and then get the box on. I also figured out with the drive shaft that um, what I need is, uh, I thought maybe I was screwed for a bit that I wasn't gonna be able to get a U-joint, but it looks like this is just a 1350 U-joint here. And then on this end for the Ford, I need a 1330 U-joint, which is just, you can see the size comparison difference here. So they do make a conversion U-joint for that. I tried to get one already at Canadian Tire. They didn't have any, so that'll have to wait. But other than that, I can get the drive shaft like to the right exact length, uh, put this piece back into the drive shaft, weld it, and then get a U-joint. And then I'm gonna see next week about sending it out to get it balanced before I put it in, because it's kind of pointless to put it in and then it doesn't uh, work good because it's not balanced. I don't want to break my transmission or something. So anyways, what we're gonna do now is I'll get the cutoff wheel and I'll cut this, all this out of here. And then I'll make a new piece and I'll weld it back in. So I got a nice patch. And then behind here is like a, like a nut with a, like a brace behind it. It gets welded in. That's what these two holes are for. And then these two holes are just to weld it to here. I actually drilled them. I thought the thing went this way, but it actually went this way. So uh, I drilled a couple extra holes, but I'll just weld them up too while I'm welding them. Uh, yeah, so I'll just weld this in and uh, and it'll be good. All right, so I got that all welded in. There it is, sprayed it with some undercoating, and uh, that's good to go. Used to have a nitrous kit in here, so there was uh, bottle brackets right here. I just welded those up. I gave the whole box a quick paint of some flat black, just to clean it up. Scraped off a bunch of the scaly rust and stuff, and just uh, painted it you know, back up a little bit, so you can see. Looks way better, uh, especially in the wheel wells and stuff. 
and then I'll show you what I'm doing now. So I moved my battery from behind the seat and I want to put it in the back of the box. So what I did is I have this old uh, Thermos brand cooler. So I'm going to bolt it, drill four holes, bolt it to the floor here, and then half of it I'll put the battery and the other half will just be for like rags and a quart of oil and whatever else I need that I can't really fit in the cab. I figured that'll look cool. Uh, it'll look like the cooler's just sitting there, but you have the batteries in there. So I have it all mocked up, sitting on some 2x4s to get where I want it. And I'll just drill four holes and, uh, and bolt it on. There it is all mounted up. You can see the holes. And actually the bolts are countersunk in there, so I could fill these holes up with silicone, especially these two, if I still wanted to use it as a cooler. I kind of had a thought of putting the battery and then putting a piece of wood or a piece of something between the couple slats and then sealing it up with silicone and then I could still use it as a cooler but I don't know if I'm gonna bother with that and then uh, I also put uh, the holes here two grommets for the uh, battery cables to go through so that'll be good and then I actually painted the lid because uh, my daughter had primered it before and then I actually knocked it off the thing so I got it all dirty there so I'm gonna have to sand the corner down and repaint it but uh, that's gonna have to wait till it dries but uh, yeah we'll continue on this stuff uh, later on because uh, I gotta go for dinner hey what's up so it is the next day uh, I'm out in the garage I'm not really doing anything much I got the drive shaft kind of done uh, all I ended up doing is cutting cutting the drive shaft a little bit more to get it to slip into this piece and actually I haven't got a U-joint yet. I went around today trying to get one and it seems like nobody has this particular U-joint. Uh, one place had it but they wanted like outrageous amount of money like 60 bucks. Uh, another place had it, a Napa. Uh, they only wanted like 30 but they have it's like a five day wait to get it. So I gotta go to another place tomorrow. They should have it. Their transmission uh, drive shaft shop. Heavy duty place so they should have it. But what I had done in the meantime is I had taken the caps out of my stock drive shaft, which are actually the 1330 cap. And uh, by taking all the needles out, it actually fit over this U-joint. And so I am able to use it as a mock-up U-joint to put everything in the way it's supposed to be. Uh, once I got it in as the mock-up, you can see it in there. I was able to um, cut the drive shaft a tiny bit more and get it to fit. And so it actually, uh, it slides in nice into the transmission enough to get the drive shaft off nicely uh, so now all i really have to do is pull that off clean it up um, make sure that the two yoke ends are like in line with each other i actually have a laser level thing i guess it's more probably more for house use like this kind of laser level but i'm hoping that if i set this up on the cap it'll shoot a straight line down the end of the drive shaft i'll be able to line that up properly weld it and then take it down and hopefully get them to balance it so that it's good but other than that it should be pretty good and uh, if that all works out that's going to be a pretty awesome drive shaft for uh, not a lot of money uh, if you see the novas up on jack stands that's because we went out cruising last night and all of a sudden my transmission started making some noise uh, it has a straight cut gear set in it and it, it does make a whining sound but actually it's gotten kind of loud so you can look forward to seeing the transmission removal of the Nova and tearing the power glide apart to find out why it's making that noise and hopefully there's not crazy damage because those straight cut gear sets are expensive and I really don't want to have to uh, buy another one, that's for sure. I think that's going to be it for this video. So uh, next video we're definitely going to get the uh, Shit Horse Aluminum 5.3 put in the car. We're doing that tomorrow hopefully. Uh, that's the plan. We're going to haul it out to Clayton's. The car's there and we're going to get it in. Look forward to seeing that. Uh, like always, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, we'll check you later. Cue the grinding montage. It's my grinding montage! <laughs>